Clearly, the main reason we declare registers in VHDL is to use them in pipelines. So, there are two reasons to, to, to declare a, a register. One is to use it in a pipeline, and another is to use it as a general storage in a register file. We will uh, later on uh, see how to declare memories in VHDL, and it's always recommended to use memories for any kind of sizable uh, storage and reserve the use of registers only for pipelining. Now, I'm just going to look at something really trivial first, and it, uh, if it's not obvious, but this is how to declare a negative edge triggered register. Uh, the only difference from a positive edge triggered register is uh, the condition uh, clock event and clock equals zero instead of clock event and clock equals one. That's just going to create a negative edge triggered register. In general, I recommend, strongly recommend against mixing positive edge triggered registers and negative edge triggered registers in the same, at least in the same module, if not, if not in the same design. Um, some synthesis tools will refuse to synthesize a design with two clocks, uh, two clock edges. And others will just end up, you know, having, you know, just uh, reducing your frequency of operation by half. So it just complicates design for no reason. So just try to avoid it. Now, here's the, this is an example of how we can use uh, pipeline uh, registers in VHDM. So you can see an example here where we have uh, three multipliers, and these multipliers are doing um, processing on inputs A, B, and uh, C, and D, and on intermediate outputs M1, P, and M2, P, P, and so on. Now, um, if you look at the process below it, you will find that the process um, includes a bunch of registers, and these registers are all reset by global reset, reset equals one, so that all of them have zeros assigned to them. And you will notice that I use the syntax others equal to zero to fill these registers. This, this allows us to uh, clear these registers without having to uh, explicitly state their sizes. Again, combined with the use of generics, this allows your design to uh, remain very scalable and flexible. And then else if clock, equal, uh, clock event and clock equals zero, which in this case means we are using negative edge triggered registers, uh, we assign all the registering actions so that AP is equal to A, which is this register, BP is equal to B, which is this register, and let's look, for example, at uh, M, uh, 3PP goes to M3, which is this registering action. And so all the registers are stated in a single process. Could we have split these processes into uh, this process into a, uh, a number of processes? Yes, we could have done that. We could have had a process for each register, but it would have produced the same synthesis results, the same simulation results, and it would just have made the code uh, a lot more bulky. Now, what's happening outside the process is that we are doing the three multiplication operations. And so this approach is separating the uh, combinational operations, which is the multiplication from registering. And it's keeping registering within a separate process and it's keeping multiplication outside the process. So this is very easy to read because here all you're doing is just assignment. You're assigning one thing to another. This is just registering. So it corresponds directly to the circuit and you can extract the circuit from it very easily. And Obviously, what's happening outside is happening concurrently, so it is describing uh, combinational circuits, and in this case, it's obvious that these three combinational circuits are three multipliers. The reason I'm talking in detail about this is that there's a practice that sometimes uh, some people do, uh, which is um, to mix um, uh, processing with, um, with registering. So, for example, look at this uh, process and this process has a uh, an assignment, right? Which is M one is assigned something, but it also has processing, which is this multiplication. And so you could have probably included the multiplication operations within the process on the top, but that's not a good practice. Why? Because it actually you have to think about it. Where are the multiplications assigned to which signals? 
right? And then when you manage to find out which signal to assign it to, the people who read it also have to think about it. And that's not good practice. Code should be readable. Code should correspond directly to hardware. And even though you, you might find a way to mix multiplication and registering like this to produce the same synthesis results and the same simulation results as this, this still remains a much better written code. So my recommendation is that a process that includes registering should include only registering. And a process that does not include registering should describe a clear combinational circuit. And any combinational circuit that can be performed using concurrent statements outside processes like this should be performed using concurrent statements outside processes. Now, speaking of uh, pipelines, you'll notice that here and here, for example, you have shift registers. And shift registers are always um, associated with pipelines because you have signal alignment issues. You have to align signals so that they, uh, the signal processing elements or the functional units uh, have the correct operands and the correct cycles. And so we have to consider how uh, shift registers are declared and described. And here we have one way to, des uh, to describe a shift register. Again, uh, the shift register has a, uh, an asynchronous reset. And so when the asynchronous reset is one, these two signals are cleared. And again, we use this uh, syntax to clear them regardless of their uh, length, right? And so you'll see, you'll see that we have two signals here. One is shift drag and one is shift out. Uh, shift drag is the contents of the shift register itself, and shift out is the output of the shift register. And so if you assume that you have a shift register, which is of a certain length, and its output is a signal, then that signal should be called shift drag, uh, shift out. And all the contents are called shift drag. And so what happens at any clock event and clock equal one, which is at any positive edge of a clock, is that um, shift out, which is the output of the shift register, is going to take the last element of uh, the shift register. So it's a FIFO, basically. It's a first in, first out. So the last element of the shift register becomes our new output for the new cycle. And then we start a loop, and we will look at the syntax of loops and VHDL in detail later, but we have a loop here that loops between zero and just before the end of the shift register. So one element before the end of the shift register. And for every element, it will assign the value that was in the element before it. So for element one, it will assign the value of element zero, element two is element one, and element n minus one is element n minus two, which is exactly the uh, function of a shift register, uh, except that the element zero is also going to accept an input from the outside called shift n. Notice that everything that happens within the condition here, the output coming out, the input going in, and all the uh, uh, other inputs shifting is happening simultaneously. They are happening concurrently, which is how a shift register behaves. There's an alternative a uh, way to describe shift registers, which is really elegant and cool. And so I have to show it to you. And it uses the concatenation operation. So again, uh, we have two signals, uh, actually three signals, shift out, shift in, and shift drag. And with an asynchronous reset, we nullify the contents of the register as well as its output. And at any positive edge of the clock, shift out becomes the last element of the uh, register. And then the register itself, will take a new value, which is composed of the concatenation of two things. So the shift register is going to accept a concatenation of the old value of the shift, shift register minus its last value, and which means concatenation shift in. So we have shift in, and it's ended with the old value, which is what's going to happen if you uh, perform a shift register. So this is actually a very succinct way. It just uses a single line to declare the shift, shift register. So which is better, doing it using uh, concatenation or doing it using loops? There's absolutely no difference. They both produce the same circuit. 
But using, using loops actually is more flexible because it allows you to uh, declare sh shift registers of a, a certain width and of a certain depth. And so this is the full, um, you know, full disclosure on how to declare a uh, generic shift register that you can, uh, uh, that can fit any, uh, any use. And so we declare a new type here. It's a user-defined type, and it's an array type. So we talked about user-defined types and arrays. Arrays are uh, vectors of uh, an, uh, an already defined data type. And when we define an array of standard logic vectors, then it becomes uh, an array of uh, binary words, which in this case is going to be the shift register. The length of the array is uh, r length minus 1. Uh, down to, to zero, which means that its length is actually our length. So this is the length of the shift register. And its width is W. So this is a shift register that actually shifts words that are W bits wide. W could also be one, in which case we have a one bit shift register. And the syntax of the body of the architecture itself is identical to the uh, loop that we used to uh, declare the shift register a little bit earlier. And so this allows you to have a shift register of any depth and of any width. And this is the way I recommend that you declare a shift register.